Let's talk markets now uh, as Wall Street gets ready to kick off the first trading day of the new year. Joining us for that is Simeon Hyman, head of investment strategy at ProShares, and Tony Zhang, chief strategist for Options Play. Tony is also CNBC contributor. Tony, I'm not familiar with, with much of your work, but Options Play, how, what is long term for you and what is short term? What's intermediate term? It, you have a really short term perspective in general. Uh, so on the very short term, I think most metrics are fairly overextended and overbought. And well, that, that's what I'm getting. But I'm just asking you, what is your the way that you approach things? Is is is, an, is it an option strategy? Yes. So it's very short term. Correct. All right. Why you see profit taking? Mm -hmm. That's what I think is the knee jerk consensus Absolutely. opinion right, right now. Uh, we're up 200 or what at 160 today. So when it. it Will you change that or will you wait for it or, or did you get something wrong or is it possible that it, it happens tomorrow or next week? So we're still looking at least 30 to 60 days out. If you look at where the VIX was trading in the last few trading sessions before the end of the year, we saw that spike in VIX despite where us making new highs. So what that tells me is that traders are trying to buy some protection going into January and February. Right. OK, so that's what they were doing. Now, uh, if this continues to go higher, do they cover? Uh, absolutely. So, so cover and, and get out of the protection. And we already saw some of that at, at the, during the close on Tuesday. When do you expect to actually see the profit taking then? Uh, I in would January. say in, in, in early January. Okay, so in a pullback of 5 to 7% on the S&P. I think 302 on the SPY or 3000 on SPX is the level that we would be targeting to Sometime the downside. Sometime in January. Sometime in January to February. Okay, yeah. you are pretty uh, short-term oriented. For the, what's your, can, can you use option uh, and VIX analysis to figure out 2020 overall for the year, or do you have an opinion there? Well, VIX is a 30-day window, right. so not not necessarily. You could look at longer-term options, but they don't trade very actively as much if you're looking at 2020. Um, but absolutely, we're, we're generally more a little bit more short-term. Okay, so what do you look, see for 2020? So personally, I see a few different things. I, I see emerging markets is, is a big thing that, that I'm interested in. The other thing is actually the dollar. The big, a big theme that I currently see is the dollar currently making a meaningful break below the 200-day moving average. I see some uh, developing uh, countries, uh, FX, being a very big driver for 2020. Um, also, consumers, a big thing, big theme that I have right now is the fact okay. that... When it's all said and done, what does that mean for the S&P for the year? Uh, I think marginally higher. Marginally higher. All right. Where are you, Samir? I guess I'll take a swing at 2020. I think there's a hidden catalyst. First, from a, from a business cycle standpoint, there's no signs of, of overheating. We've never had a recession without the capacity utilization index going over 80, we're at 77. So there's no overheating going on. But there's a hidden catalyst for earnings that I think people are forgetting about, and that's the big corporate tax cut we had. The corporate tax cut spiked gross uh, profit margins from 9 to 10% in 2018. They went halfway down as that got passed to consumers last year. Now we don't have to anniversary that anymore. So last year you had 4% top line growth, zero earnings growth. I think you could see at least mid-single-digit earnings growth, and that should be enough for not 30% gains in the S&P, but something plausible. So you do, th I mean, one of the, your main points in, in your notes is that big cap stocks are not cheap at all. That's right. It, 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 I like looking, if you look at the Clinton impeachment period versus the Trump impeachment period, you get some kind of interesting oh, uh, that's comparisons. Right. Did, 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 we forgot about that already? I, what happened? What finally happened there? Uh, do we know? In, in Clinton the articles or have Trump? not been sent to the Senate. Yeah, we're still, we're still oh, waiting. Oh, that's it. Yes, God, I yes. just totally forgot. But by the way, it was almost the same period of time. <laughs> no. the, Clint, the, the House proceedings started in December as well for Clinton, so it's yeah. sort of, it's no, nice to, but, but in any event, we were at they, I don't know if they're playing this right. I think, you know, the, you did it. Let, let's, I, you know, we're not even talking about it. Mark's up 200 points. Are they going to, what's going to happen? I, they're, Depends they're on what now. some of the Republican January senators. January 6th, they get back. Yeah, well, remember, anyway. so if we go back, to the previous impeachment, we know we had another 18 months of a roaring bull market. He was in and his we, second term, though. And we were starting at 28 times earnings with 5% right. on the two this years. This is different because so, it's a first-term president. So we're, we're in a little bit of a, a, of a different spot this, this time around. But look, if you're looking for bargains, I still say it's mid and small caps with the challenge there that leverage increases as you go down in cap. Mid caps have double the leverage of the S&P 500. Small caps have triple. So if you're going down in cap, going up in quality is a good way to try to capture that discount. Because even at 2021 times earnings, we're at relatively full valuations on large. So you're, you're in the crowd, mid to high single digits for 2020. Is that your forecast? I'll take that. And I'll also concur with your emerging markets idea. 
you know, you're at a 50 percent discount on a price to book basis. If oil holds up, that's still a driver, even though people kind of don't look at it as much. Natural resources and commodity prices are relevant. And by the way, emerging market balance sheets, company, companies in emerging markets, actually stronger than developed international. All right, so the chances we go up 20 percent this year are what? 20 percent is a little high. What, what are the chances? I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll give it a one in four shot that we're up 20 percent. The chances we go down 20 percent are what? One in 10 chance. 